I'm a data scientist working at Ericsson, mainly in optimization of cellular networks. That, well, that's uh, what I'm about to explain. And in the use case uh, is just the applic interference optimizer. That is just how to optimize a cellular network with a sing in a single shot with graph neural networks. Uh, mainly, I'm going to focus on the applic interference problems. So, because you could have many different optimizers, and that's the problem that we are going to try to optimize. So, the first thing that I should explain is what is a cellular network, and it's just one type of telecommunications network. In fact, it's the one that we are all using right now, because it's the one that our mobile phones are using. And it's just that the telecommunications network is divided into cells, and what is a cell? A cell is just a geographical area that could be bigger, smaller, can have one or many antennas, and that the users that are inside this cell are using the uh, antennas of the cell for receiving and transmitting information. That could be phone calls, uploading, uploading files, or, well, any type of information that the users are uh, want to receive or transmit. Also, each cell of the cellular network has certain parameters that you can modify for changing the behavior of the cell. And in fact, that's the parameters that we are going to use for trying to optimize the cellular network. Uh, the one thing that we have to take into account is that if we modify those parameters, we are going to affect our neighbor cell. Mm, only the one hope neighbor cell, but if we change the parameters, we change the behavior of our cell and the neighbor. And well, first of all, what is the objective that we are trying to achieve here? And is okay, we want to optimize the, the network because we have identified some cells that we are going to call them issue cells. And are just cells that have a certain problem. It could be an interference problem or any other type of problem. And the previous solution was to uh, deploy a reinforcement learning algorithm to try to solve that. Mm, so the approach was, OK, um, we have a simulator that we have built that tries to represent fairly the behavior of the cellular network. And then we have the real network. The problem is that the simulator was not accurate enough. Uh, so we have to train in the simulator and then also train in the real network. But since we have to collect data for many days to do the optimization, uh, we end up doing this iteration with the reinforcement algorithm over the real network for several weeks. And we end up degrading the network of the client. So, well, the client was not very happy with that. Um, so the solution we are proposing here is, okay, we are going to change all of that. Uh, we are going to do all the optimization offline, and for that we try to build a really accurate model that represents the reality and then optimize the parameters uh, with respect to that model. So uh, you can see in the slide, in fact, we find a performance indicator that is correlated with the problem that we are trying to solve. Then we have a model that is going to be a graph neural network for also modeling the relation with the neighbors. And as inputs of that model, we are going to have some fixed variables selected by radio experts that are going to be the KPIs, and then the parameters that we will change. Once we have trained the model, we start the second step. That is, okay, with any type of algorithm, it could be an iterative algorithm, genetic algorithm, or whatever, we change the parameters to try to improve the performance indicator that is going to predict the GNN. And well, that's the framework that I'm going to explain. So now for explaining the specific problem or the specific optimization that we're going to do is the Appling interference. And what is the Appling interference? The Appling interference is the interference that occurs when the users try to transmit something to the network. It could be uploading a file or a phone call. And um, we have some interference of the neighbor. When does this happen? When we have a neighbor that has a lot of users in the border of the cell. So our users are transmitting information to the antennas, but also the users of the neighbor cell are transmitting information to their antennas, but also to our antennas. So they cause the noise. The performance indicator that we are going to use for trying to solve this is the SINR. The SINR is just the relation between the signal and the noise. The higher the SINR, the better the signal with respect to the noise. The lower the SINR, the worse. And the parameters that we are going to try to change are the P0 and the alpha that are two power control parameters. If we increase them, then our users are going to transmit with more power, so less noise in our cell. The bad thing is that if we increase the power control parameters, then our neighbor is experiencing the opposite. 
is experiencing more noise because we are transmitting with more power. So we, we have to balance those two in the optimization. Then we will use, as I mentioned before, the graph neural network as a well model. We are calling this digital twin, even it is not really a digital twin, because it's going to model really accurate the reality. And it's going to model really accurate the reality mainly because of two things. One is that we have a huge amount of data, because I mean, all of us with our mobile phones are really generating data in any moment, and we can collect this data in the cellular network. And the second uh, thing is that we don't have prob uh, the same problems as other use cases in graph neural networks, and it's only we only have to use one layer of a graph neural network, because when you uh, when you have to use many layers and you stack them, you end up in problems as the over smoothing, and your model is not accurate enough. But here we only uh, care about the one hop neighbors, so we don't have the problem. So with a one layer GNN and then a multi-layer perception is enough for constructing a really accurate model. And in fact, what we have here is a model that has uh, less than 1% of error. And well, I repeat that as the inputs, we are going to use the KPIs, the parameters, and also in the modeling the relation between the different cells, we are going to use geographical information and the number of users that are uh, coming and um, uh, uh, going forward uh, from one use from one cell to another, and then we end up in the well in the optimization framework. Uh, in the optimization framework, in the left part, you can see uh, that we have uh, detected some issue cells. The rules for detecting the issue cells are defined for radio experts, but mainly is that they have the performance indicator in a really low, and the issue cells have some parameters that we will optimize. The only parameters that we will change is the issue cells. However, this also could be expanded to also change the neighbor parameters to try to optimize. And then with the graph neural network that we have trained with the data of many different networks, we are going to predict the SINR with the current parameters. And here it comes, the changing of the parameters of the network. And for that, we, as I mentioned before, we can use any type of algorithm at the beginning, we use an iterative algorithm. The problem with that is that since the graph neural network, um, when you change some parameter, it affects your neighbor. You have to do many loops in the iteration. So it's better a genetic algorithm or even a reinforcement algorithm and use the model as the environment instead of the reality. And then we keep changing the parameters to optimize the CINR, uh, well, until we met the final condition that is that our SINR is optimized. And as I said, the, is the, if the model is accurate enough, these results are, well, can be applied to the reality. What we have done for all of this is collect a week of data, try to optimize uh, the parameters for that week of data. And since the behavior doesn't really change too much in a specific cell during the time, if you optimize or find the parameters that optimize this last week are going to be the parameters that optimize the next week or even the next month. Uh, well, so that's the use case, and now I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, well, the variables and everything that is mm, used, especially the KPIs, are um, selected by the radio experts that we have in our teams. Um, I think they divided into uh, different KPIs or variables that we can use, and we uh, start to try. It is is one of the most critical parts because if we like select the ground variables, the model is, is going to impede a huge drop in performance. Uh, but I can, I mean, uh, specifically to... Uh, uh, no, no. Yeah. Uh, the parameters not, is part of the KPIs. Mm. Yeah. It's true that uh, that the 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 thing that is that there are fixed variables. It's not really <laughs> really true, <laughs> but um, I mean it's a, an approximation that at least for the case of the public interference works really well. Yeah, that's I think is our next well uh, part of the journey next because we have other um, projects that are about planning, and well we will try to combine them, but <laughs> we are not yet here. <laughs> Uh, it's not that 
the simulation is slow is that at least uh, by hard coding or trying to come up with equations that model the reality um, we have tried that for many many years but we don't like find uh, the simulator that is accurate enough mainly because the equations maybe are clear but then uh, the moving of the users through your network is not that clear or at least you cannot simulate that really well so um, it depends of what optimizer you have but in this case of the uplink is just an optimizer that the uh, clients tend to run in a critical point so they tend to run this when they have really bad performance in some cells maybe um, one month and a half two months or at least that's the idea there are other use cases where the uh, the time of the iteration is quite um, shorter then that's <laughs> um, the problem with that is that for now we are using aggregated daily data so we cannot that uh, cannot do that but it's one of the other things in the roadmap <laughs> uh, the problem is that we have different parts in Ericsson so we are going we collect the data and we try to optimize but then the part that is uh, like coding um, the um, core of the network is another part of Ericsson so I would hope that in the future at least these two parts start to collaborate so we can do that but for now what we have is in the core so in real time we have really s uh, I mean there's control of the uplink interference and other problems but these are a really simplified control and then we have this department and it's like okay we collect the data we don't do it in real time but the algorithms that we can give to you are more accurate Okay, that's all I I I, <laughs> I think we can go all to lunch. <laughs> Thank you very much and